Hello and welcome to the second phase of the Paynton and Preston Seafront Master Plan Consultation. Although the presentations have been split between the Paynton and the Preston Seafront designs, the first section of both is the same, so please do skip forward to around 3 minutes 30 if you have already watched one of the presentations, where we will start to discuss the seafronts in more detail. As mentioned, we are now in the second phase of public consultation for the project, and we'd like to thank everyone who spoke to us or gave us feedback during the first phase. Overall, we had almost 350 responses back from people in the local area, with a good spread across age groups. If you'd like to see the full feedback from stage one, we've provided a link to a summary document on the webpage. All of the responses we received have fed into the design so far, allowing us to develop initial thoughts and ideas, but we want these to act as a starting point for a conversation. Which flood defence alignment is right? Where would you like a pedestrian crossing? Are we showing enough planting? Be as specific as you'd like in your responses. We know there's a lot more to build on from this point and we want the plan to be shaped by you. As a starting point and using feedback governed in stage one, we've put together what we feel are the key issues the seafronts face. Parking came up multiple times in the feedback, both from a positive and negative standpoint. We believe that at present parking dominates the seafront edge and compromises the experience of the seafront, reducing views of the sea from the greens and creating a barrier to movement. The echelon layout of the cars also creates areas where not everyone feels safe, with multiple people mentioning that children run in and out of cars as they cross between the Geoplay Park and the beach. We agree with you that the seafronts are looking tired and run down. Both seafronts need updating in terms of materials and furniture, which is something that a future project could achieve. We don't want Preston to lose its individuality. The beach is its own entity and should remain as such going forward, with its sense of place being celebrated and enhanced where possible through the designs. There were multiple people who mentioned the existing facilities on the seafront and how these could be improved. We'll aim to show potential opportunities for additional or upgraded facilities on the seafronts so that if and when additional funding is found, there are projects already identified on a plan. With biodiversity under threat, there needs to be a balance struck between lawn and wildflowers. Large expanses of monocultural lawn require a lot of maintenance and don't support the wide range of species that can be found in other more diverse planting types. This view was supported by many, with comments mentioning the need for more trees, planting or wildflower meadows. All of these key issues have fed into a set of nine overarching principles for the designs that we'd like to achieve through the project. Firstly, we want to put pedestrian movement and safety first. We want to ensure the seafront is accessible for all. We want to reduce visual impact and severance caused by vehicles on the seafront. Flood defences need to support existing businesses along the seafronts, as well as supporting the local character of the seafronts. We need to provide space for a range of activities and uses throughout the year. We need to ensure that views of the sea and the beach are retained from the promenade. We need to provide more informal play and seating along the seafront for all users and all ages. And lastly, we need to provide space for new planting that supports local flora and fauna. To ensure the designs are cohesive and respond to place, we have developed an identity for paint and seafront. This will provide a suggestion of the character that will sculpt the future master plan and ensure a coherent design language is created. We want to build on the strong existing brand and history of the English Riviera and turn up the intensity. We want to use the classic iconography of the palm tree that is used in both old and new marketing and create a new era for the Riviera. Much loved existing features such as the pier and the Geoplay Park will form a strong backdrop to the new palms and planters. Existing hotels with their classic pops of seafront colour will be echoed in the public realm, creating green, playful and usable year-round spaces that locals and tourists alike will want to visit and use. Incorporating this identity, we have begun to explore what the seafront could look like with the new flood defences integrated into the landscape. To allow you to get an understanding of how the seafront is affected by different alignments, we have developed views of sample sections of the seafront alongside an initial sketch plan for both a landward and a seaward alignment. Starting with the landward alignment, this runs along the edge of the greens and eastern esplanade, with floodgates integrated where vehicular and pedestrian access is required. In addition to this, there are seven other big moves that we would like to make in the design of the seafront. The first big move we want to make is closing the central section of Eastern Esplanade, making this area pedestrianised with only timed servicing access for the existing businesses along the promenade. There is also the potential to make the northern end of the promenade winter only access for vehicles using the seafront. Next, we want to provide a new two way cycleway along Esplanade Road. The road is currently on average 8 to 10 metres wide, with multiple areas where it's made into three lanes to provide a right hand turn. 
We'd like this road to be reduced in width to an average of six metres, reducing the barrier it creates along the western edge of the seafront and giving back priority to cyclists and pedestrians. We understand this isn't a change that can happen overnight. However, this would provide a safe cycling route away from the promenade, increasing the usability, safety and flexibility of the seafront. A key point to note with this option is that it also would require the pedestrian footpath to sit within the current edge of painting green. This section shows the changing widths and space that would be needed to be used if cycling were to be taken off of the central promenade. With the change in vehicular movement along the seafront, there would need to be a change in parking on the seafront as well. There is currently 209 spaces along the seafront. We've tried to take a pragmatic approach to try and identify any opportunities for parking if it were felt that more spaces were needed after the central section is closed. One option is perhaps using the space adjacent to the View Cinema for new access and parking, potentially creating around 45 spaces. The existing parking area behind the seafront kiosk to a peer approach could be slightly redesigned to provide eight spaces for existing businesses. Lastly, there could be an option to use South Green during the summer when events aren't using it. To ensure its green appearance is retained, this would involve reinforcing the grass and not using the area during the winter months to allow the grass and the ground to recover. This area could provide around 85 new spaces. With the designs, we want to ensure that events are still a key feature of the seafront, so all existing areas of flat event space are retained. With the closure of the central section of Eastern Lespinard, this gives us the opportunity to expand the pedestrian experience at the seafront. We want to create a central pedestrianised area with a wider promenade to the northern and southern sections. This will allow us to create a tree-lined seafront with raised planters, seating, informal play, terraces, public art and new lighting that transforms the usability of the seafront. The new spaces that result from this will support existing businesses both during the day and the night. And lastly, we want to link better with the town centre by creating a new arrival space from Torbay Road in front of the View Cinema. The following section runs through some example areas of the seafront to show you what the landward flood defence option could look like. Here we have the existing view of the seafront. This is located in the south and north green area. As we flip through the images, you will see there are a variety of opportunities being highlighted. Here you can see that the visual impact of the flood defences is being reduced from the greens. There's an opportunity to provide new seating, planting and formal play, and also stepped access to the greens, with potential for occasional floodgates for level access. There's an opportunity to provide a new widened promenade in conjunction with the flood defence works and also relocate the shelters to the centre of the promenade. There is also the potential to close the northern end of Eastern Esplanade during the summer, as highlighted previously. This would increase the safety of this section, allowing children and adults to move freely between the beach and attractions on the green, and also use the space for summer pop-up events or kiosks. Moving to the central pedestrianised zone along Eastern Esplanade, there's a potential to provide space for existing kiosks with cafe seating. Along the landward side of the flood defences, the grass slope would need to change to terraces to ensure that as much space is retained for existing uses as possible. We've also modelled what this area could look like if new kiosks were provided to the existing businesses, or potentially how the flood defences could be designed to create more sinuous forms, creating planters and pocket plazas for the kiosks to sit within. To show how the flood defences would integrate with key access points, we've modelled the entrance to pier approach. Here you can see how the space could transform despite vehicular movement still being required. Floodgates would be needed across the pier approach entrance, however these would only be used during the worst storm events, whilst during day-to-day -day operation of the seafront, the area would be accessible for all. Lastly for this option, we've drawn an initial sketch plan. As mentioned at the start, this is only an initial ideas, and by no means is it fixed. To allow you to review it at your own pace, please pause the presentation. This final slide shows whether the landward flood defence option is achieving the nine overarching principles mentioned at the start of the presentation. As you can see, we feel that all nine principles are being achieved with this option. The next option we're going to review is the seaward flood defence alignment. In this option, the wall is located along the eastern side of Eastern Esplanade, with an expected height of between 2.5 to 3.2 metres above existing promenade levels. This is, however, subject to further flood modelling. As of before, we're starting with the big moves we'd like to make to the seafront in conjunction with this option. The first would see the whole of Eastern Esplanade closed to traffic. This would be needed due to the mitigation measures that would be required for this option, as will be seen later on. 
As with before, we'd aim to provide a new cycle route along Esplanade Road and would also need to look at parking options. With this option, there would be a significant reduction in parking numbers on the seafront due to the road closure. Existing event space would be retained on the greens as before. Aside from the road closure, the other key change would be the provision of a new 7 metre wide upper promenade, which would sit alongside the new flood wall. This would require a full redesign of the seafront, with associated ramps, steps and high floodgates to ensure the seafront is accessible. There would also, however, be the opportunity to provide terrace planting edges, seating or even play to take up the level change. New spaces would be created along the length of the promenade, relocating existing kiosks onto the upper promenade to provide sea views. As with before, we'd also look to provide a new arrival space to Torbay Road. The following slides provide the render views of the seaward option, taking the same areas shown in the landward version. With just the vertical wall, views of the sea and the beach would be lost. However, by terracing the edge and creating an upper promenade, we're able to create an entirely new seafront edge. Vehicular traffic is removed completely, increasing safety along the seafront. However, views of the sea are only possible from the upper prom. Looking from the beach, the visual impact of this option is clear, and this is also highlighted when looking at the pier approach section. Very high floodgates would be needed at key access points, and pedestrian access needs would mean that the walls in tiny areas such as this would be at full height. Long ramps down to the beach would be needed to reduce the height of floodgates where possible. This view shows the area surrounding shoreline. Due to the height of the building underpass, the wall would need to run underneath whilst the promenade drops down to existing levels. This creates a very enclosed space underneath the building. Finally, we show again the sketch plan for this option. As mentioned last time, please pause the presentation to look over the plan. Lastly, we've again compared the seaward option to the project's overarching aims to see whether it's achieving all nine. Due to the visual impact of the flood wall and the amount of ramps needed, we don't feel that it achieves all of the principles. Thank you for watching this presentation. Please follow the online link to fill out the questionnaire or come and meet us in person on the seafront. The final stage of engagement is due to be released in July. This is where we'll show the preferred option proposal along with a full initiative plan and views.